The complex operation to reopen the port of Baltimore after the deadly Francis Scott Key bridge collapse. Several cranes, including the largest floating crane on the East Coast, arrived at the site. More vital equipment is on the way to remove debris on the nearly 100,000 ton cargo ship that rammed into the bridge on Tuesday. Wreckage has prevented divers from trying to recover the bodies of four of the victims. Ms. Nicole Skanga is in Baltimore. Nicole, good morning. Good morning, Michelle. The Army Corps of Engineers says it's nearly done sonar mapping the channel. Now, once that's done, the next step will be to cut the collapsed bridge into pieces and then lift all of that twisted steel and concrete out. A colossal crane capable of moving 1,000 tons now poised to lift the wreckage of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. This crane that we're looking at is massive. The thing we also know is this. So is the challenge ahead of us. An estimated two to 3,000 tons of steel now sitting atop of the cargo ship Dolly. It's at least going to get cut safely into four pieces, and then we'll slowly and deliberately take it off the front of that vessel. Underway, seven floating cranes, 10 tugboats, nine barges, eight salvage vessels, and five Coast Guard vessels, a fleet tasked with clearing the 700-foot channel. The top priority for all the equipment that we're marshalling right here is going to be focused on clearing the channel. Meanwhile, families still reeling from the loss of six men working to fill potholes on the key bridge when it collapsed underneath them. Carlos Alexis Suazo is the brother of minor Yasir Suazo Sandoval. He was a kind human being, his brother says. He motivated people and everything he started, he finished it and wants him to be remembered for his big heart. I would do anything, Suazo says. I'd prefer I died so he could keep living. As a community rallies around the construction workers originally from Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras. The workers who make it possible to get to work, to visit family, the workers who work at nine, and in the coal. Moises Diaz was also slated to repair the key bridge Tuesday, but his shift changed, sparing him the same fate of men he called brothers. No matter how difficult, dangerous, Diaz says, that's how we live, earn our salaries. Now he's praying this tragedy shatters stigmas against immigrants. Y nosotros, a veces, incluso, Sometimes when we're out there working, people drive by and yell, go back to Mexico, Diaz says. But we're all not Mexican, and this is a country of immigrants. Diaz tells us that his heart is filled with sadness, yet despite his loss, despite all of his grief from losing these six close friends, he also says that if he were asked to help rebuild the bridge, he would do it because it's his job. Jeff. Okay, Nicole, thank you.